What is up you guys, Nick here from Shop Last, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a rug using a tufting gun. I'm gonna break this video down into sections, everything you'll possibly need to know on how to make one of these. I made a lot of mistakes when making this project, which is why it's taken me so long to finish. Um, so I'm glad to take that knowledge, share it with you all, so you don't have to go through the same pain and suffering <laughs> that I went through. Without further ado, Let's freaking get into it. All right, we are gonna learn how this machine works. If you run into any problems along the road, I think it's important that you know how this machine works so that you can problem solve for yourself. We're gonna break this up into two portions. I'm gonna show you the general workings of the machine and then how to make adjustments. So to start off, this is your on-off switch, off, on. When it is on, a little red light will come on in the back. When it is off, it will be off. The reason this is not on right now is because I have the machine unplugged. If you're going to do any adjustments on this machine, make sure it is off and unplugged. You do not want to accidentally stab yourself at a thousand revolutions per minute um, when working on this machine. That would suck. This here is your trigger. That is what controls it. All right, as you'll see, this is the motor. It controls this main wheel here which rotates this main shaft in here, which spins both the top and the bottom arms. Um, you'll notice here, this lower track controls your scissors, the upper track controls the needle. So when one is all the way forward, the other one is all the way back. So when this thing spins, the needle comes in, the scissors come out, and then the scissors come in and the needle comes out. That is generally how this machine works. Um, when you are setting your bar here on the lower portion controlling the scissors. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this is all the way in. I found that that is for the smoothest revolutions, the smoothest functioning of the tool in general. I think it'll also extend the life of your machine. The upper one here controls your yarn length. So this determines how far the needle goes in, AKA how long your yarn is before it gets cut by the scissors. The longer the bar, the longer the yarn. I think at its max length, you have three quarters inch of yarn poking through the, um, tufting fabric before it gets cut, and at its shortest length, I think it's a quarter of an inch. So you adjust that by unspinning these two bolts, threading this bar into either side to make it shorter, and then making sure that you put those nuts back in place to secure it so it doesn't move around as you're using the machine. This here is your yarn guide. This is to make sure that the yarn doesn't plop up in this machine and get all jumbled up. This is obviously your needle. These are your scissors. This is your foot. Um, and then this is your handle. Obviously this handle is super important. You want to make sure you use this. It helps for a lot better control when using the machine, especially around curves and stuff like that. The last thing I'm going to show you is this RPM gauge. Let me plug it in so you can see how it works. Got it plugged in, I'll turn it on, a little red light comes on. So if I turn this all the way clockwise, you'll see it's fast, but it's also slow because I can turn it the opposite way. and it can go much faster. That you're gonna to wanna to play with to feel what is most comfortable to you. I have mine set kind of in the middle of the road. Um, that's what just felt most comfortable to me. But again, it's gonna be a, a form of preference once you start actually using the machine. As for adjustments that can be made, the foot, this is very important because um, this is what guides along the tufting fabric. And you wanna make sure that your needle retracts fully behind the foot. Um, otherwise, if it's sticking out at all and you're trying to move through the fabric, the tip of your needle is just gonna catch on your tufting fabric, tearing it, not allowing you to do smooth motions up and down the fabric and probably will just shred your tufting fabric, not allowing you to actually tuft. These are your scissors. These also have an adjustment right here. There's two um, main pieces inside. There's this little black piece here that kind of is a triangular shape. Uh, and then there's a little bump right there on this black piece. You can kind of see that little silver line there. That is where that triangular piece hits, forcing the scissors to open. And then in here, there's a little metal bar and on the inside, it has an angle cut into it. So when that triangular piece goes forward, it hits that angle, forcing the scissors to close. I'll try and demonstrate this with some regular scissors. So imagine this, right? You've got that center one in the back. 
So when the, when the scissors come back, it hits that angle, forces it open, and then as it goes forward, there's another, that bar in the front that's at an angle, and then it forces them closed um, when it goes forward. So that's kind of that general motion. But the only adjustment you can make to that is this forward bar. Um, I have mine set mostly back. That's where I kind of found where it likes to be. Um, if you have it too far forward, it won't actually close the scissors all the way and you'll be tufting and it, your thread will just pull all the way out. It won't actually cut anything. But you just wanna make sure that those scissors are fully closed when it is at its fully extended um, range of motion. So again, it's hitting that bar. It's now opening the scissors. You can kind of see right down in there. They are open. And then as they come out, it hits that bar there, forcing them to close. So that is the general function of this machine. Again, that is how you adjust that bar. If you need to adjust the foot to make sure the needle is all the way back, you unscrew this bolt here and slide the, the foot up and down. You also wanna make sure when you do that, that it is centered um, between your needle and your scissors. You obviously don't want these things hitting on that foot at all. But in general, that is how this machine works. And now we can get to tufting, baby. Let's do it. All right, the very first thing that we need to do is build a frame for our tufting cloth. But in order to do that, you need to figure out how big you want your rug. I already measured my existing rug, which I'm gonna be replacing with this one. And I think that I want it to be six by seven feet. And this tufting cloth is about six, well, it's about seven feet long. I need to make sure that it actually will be long enough as well this way. So now I'm gonna see if I can figure that out. It looks like it's definitely long enough. Oh yeah, okay. So one thing you want to make note of is that you want to build the frame bigger than the actual rug you're making because it's hard to sew up against the edge of the frame. So I'm gonna make this frame six and a half feet wide. That way I've got at least three inches on each side to have some free space. And then since it's seven feet long, I'm just gonna make it the full eight feet tall. And that way I have about six inches on the top and bottom. So six and a half feet by eight feet is how big I want my frame. So now we gotta do is build the frame. Okay, my audio equipment died when I was doing this portion, so um, I'm just gonna explain this really quick. When you're building the frame, you want the negative space to be the dimensions that you want. So you need to account for the thickness of the two by fours, uh, which are about an inch and a half wide, so three inches. So if you wanted eight feet here, you're gonna want the top portion to be eight foot three inches. If you wanna have six feet of negative space here, you're gonna wanna make these vertical pieces about six feet three inches. That way when you put it all together, you have an eight foot by six foot space. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sort through your lumber. You're gonna to wanna to pick out the straightest pieces to make up your frame. And then the ones that are a little janky, um, you can use as your support pieces and your legs. So you've sorted through all your lumber for the straightest pieces. You can then mark your pieces where you need to cut them. Again, make sure you set the depth of your skill saw. So that is the depth of the two by fours and then get to cutting. Once you've got all your frame pieces cut, you can go ahead and lay it out um, and then screw it all together. Make sure you pre-drill your holes. This helps prevent the two by fours from splitting and just makes it a little easier to put together. All right, once you get your frame put together and stood up, you can then measure and cut your legs. These are gonna be the support pieces to keep it from you know, falling forward or backwards. You're gonna to wanna to cut those and then also cut vertical supports as well, just to make the structure as stable as possible. I also cut pieces that I can mount to the top of my frame that can lean up against the wall. My frame is quite large, uh, and so I just wanted as much support as possible uh, when I was building the structure. One thing I forgot to record was me installing the feed loops on the top of the frame. So all I did to do that was I got another two x four that stuck out a couple feet from the frame, screwed it to the top, put in two eyelet bolts, 
that the yard can feed through about a foot and a half, two feet apart from each other. Um, that way the two pieces of yarn don't get tangled up when you are tufting. Now that we've got the frame built, we are going to use these carpet tacks. Um, these are basically just little sticks of wood that have sharp little nailies coming out. So you can like stretch the fabric over and hook it on the nails. Nails are also at an angle. And so you want them to be going away from the circle. That way it holds it in place. So I am just gonna stick this up here and start the nailing, I guess. <laughs> You wanna be careful with these two because they are sharp. Don't poke yourself. This thing's coming together by golly. Okay, I'm gonna trim this one. Grab my saw. Certainly don't need a uh, big saw for this, so I'm just gonna use my little finish saw. It is hard to grab onto this thing without poking yourself. This stick is pretty thin. I bet if I just... There we go. Nice. Woo! See, I poked myself, son of a gun. I didn't even cut my floor. Ooh, nice clean cut on that one. All right, let's clean up this mess a little bit. The frame is done. And now it is time for this stuff. I honestly don't remember what this stuff's called. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video real quick to talk about your fabric choice, because this is actually very important. I struggled with this the first time I went out to buy fabric. Um, this is tufting fabric. This is for rug tufting. It is a looser knit fabric that is meant for rug tufting. This is embroidery fabric. It is not the same. Although embroidery works in a similar way, this will not work with your rug gun. It is too tightly knit. It is not flexible in the knit itself, and it will not work with your rug gun. So when you're buying your fabric, make sure you get the right stuff and you get this actual tufting fabric, also known as monk's cloth. So get the right stuff. I'm gonna do it like this. So you kind of use the, the white lines on that grid as your like guide. Let's get this middle kind of mounted up. Oh, Woo! lost my receiver. Was this the, oh, I don't know which one, this is the transmitter. Not much of a tech guy. All right, that feels pretty solid, so that's good. Now I just wanna, Keep tugging until these lines are fairly straight. So again, I'm just using the existing lines on this fabric as my guide for how it should be straight. Look at that. Cool. As you can see, I will be using a projector to now trace my design onto my canvas, I guess you would call it. It's also really important to hold your breath the entire time that you're tracing because it really helps with your focus, and if you haven't noticed, I'm being sarcastic, because I just realized I hadn't breathed in like 30 seconds. These pieces need to meet up, so like that. Whoop! There's the break. All right, and there's the end.
Okay, I think that's Gooch. I'm gonna show you how I set up my yarn since I don't have an actual thing to spool it onto. I'm just using the rolls of yarn you buy at the store. The key is to grab the ones that the yarn comes out of the center. So as you see, it's coming out of the center. So how I do this is I just pull it out. I pull it out enough to where I don't feel any resistance anymore on the yarn. And I even kind of go past that just so I don't risk at all snagging you know anything and then having to re-thread the gun because every time i have to re-thread the gun a part of my soul dies so we're just gonna take our time all right and that feels pretty good i don't feel much resistance anymore so now i'm gonna start dumping it the opposite way that i just did so that way when i start to use it it's not underneath of the rest of it and it'll come up nice and easy we have one right one that's ready to go it's opened up, the yarn is pulled out. Now we have to do another one. It is crucial that we have two of these. So we're gonna do the same thing. Your yarn feeding setup is paramount. Just do yourself a favor and make sure you have this dialed in before you start to use your tufting gun. If you don't, you're gonna really be upset and it's gonna be a huge bummer and you're gonna never wanna do it again. Okay, so that feels pretty good, it's pretty loose. So I'm gonna feed it into its own pile and then we're gonna hang it on our loop. Again, the one, you want these pulling fairly straight up. So I'm gonna set this yarn over here and I'm gonna set this one over here. And then I'm gonna to the gun. All right, let's do this. Oh, you son of a redo. You're gonna grab your yarn, you're not gonna drop them for the hundredth time. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna snip them. Boom. So you have nice clean ends. And then you're gonna stick them in your mouth. And you're gonna suck on them. Cause you want them to be a little wet. So that way the threads stick together. I got myself one of these threading things. Got this little tiny loop on the end. You can use a paper clip. I used that for a while and it worked pretty well. But I kept losing it cause it was too small. So that's why I got this one. All right, you'll take your thread. You're gonna pull it in. Boom, look at that. And then, you're just gonna pull it through the gun. Now your gun is all good to go. Make sure your gun is unplugged when you're doing this. So be smart, be safe. Also have it off just in case you forget to unplug it. That's so cool, what the heck? Whoa. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. Man, it's just coming out, I didn't even cut it. Oh, you stinker. Dang it, why isn't this working? Wow, this is difficult. Oh, I almost lost the string. Hmm, you. Shoot. Dang it, why isn't it? Nope, oh no. This is not going how I planned. Ah, come on. No, shoot.
Okay, now using a pair of tweezers, we're going to pull out any yarn that is moving into parts of the design that it's not supposed to be in. This just helps clean up the look um, and just provides a better finish in the end. Okay, now it is time to apply the glue. I'm using a carpet adhesive, which worked fine, but I would recommend using the AAT 1132. I think it's a better product and just in general better for rugs. Um, this one works fine, but it stays a little tackier, a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, take a putty knife, scoop the glue out, apply it to the yarn, make sure that it presses into the yarn fibers. That way it locks the yarn in place and cannot be pulled up from the top. Once the glue is dried, then you can take it off of the frame. And I immediately um, disassembled my frame because it had been sitting in my apartment for months and I really wanted the space back. So I instantly uh, <laughs> took it apart. Excellent. Now that our frame is out of the way, I'm going to cut about four, five inches outside of the edge of the rug so I can fold it in on itself. All right, now I'm gonna cut reliefs basically going around the whole thing. So that way it can fold on itself. So the best way to cut reliefs is to find like the bends in the corner and you're going to want to cut on the outside and the inside of the curve. Now that we got all of our reliefs cut, we are going to start folding the excess fabric over onto the rug. The reason I'm doing this now is because this glue is still tacky. And so I'm just gonna stick it to itself and kind of, you know, do it that way. Carry your scissors with you in case you need to make some more relief cuts. Next step is going to be gluing the backing on. Already gripping it pretty good. I'm gonna do a seam pretty much down the middle here. I kind of found this fabric that has these kind of rubber dots on it. I figured that that would kind of help make the rug like grip to the floor so it doesn't slide around, but we will figure that out later if that actually works or not. All right, next step is gonna be cutting the edge, folding it over so it's, you know, kinda nice. I'm gonna trim the outside. All right, come on, buddy. <clears throat> okay, there we go. All right, so the way we use this stuff, lather it on pretty good, do both surfaces, and then it'll tack up. And then you can apply it. Okay, it's time to get this sucker glued down. Alrighty, now I'm going to trim this. The next step is we got to trim down all these excess bits and just kind of clean it up a little bit. And for that, we want to use a sheep 
Shearer, a, shear, a wool shearer for sheep shearing. Sharon sheared sheep by the seashore. Uh, all right, let's do it.